Hello and welcome back. This is video number three and we're going to talk about how to create a MySQL database. And then we'll talk about, in addition to that, how to insert data into a MySQL database, how to look at a database, and how to understand the basics of it so that if you ever need to do this in the future, you can. So when it comes to installing a MySQL database, it's actually a very, very easy thing to do. It's simply click, click, and a few clicks, and you're done. And I'll show you exactly the step-by-step -step process of doing that. However, that said, how do you go about inserting data into the database if you ever need to do that? Well, this is often underutilized, uh, but needed in the long term whenever you're running your website. So with that said, let me go ahead and show you how. So to create a MySQL database, it's super easy. Let's start at the top. So make sure that you're logged into your cPanel. And what you want to do is scroll downwards and look for databases. If it's different, then basically what you want to do is look for the MySQL database wizard. And this will walk you through step by step. It's the easiest way to go. So first things first, click on this. And then it's going to ask you what you want to name your database. Now, this right here is going to be your domain name. So it's going to be different for different people. And you don't have to worry about that. So just enter a database name. So we'll say DB. And this could be anything you want. You just need to remember what it is. Click on Next Step and then you want to create a username. So the username or the user has access to the database. So this is separate. So you're creating a username and then you're creating a separate database so that user has access to that user. All right. So let's put that in here. We'll just say user one. And then of course you want to do a password. And what I usually like to do is click on password generator because then you choose a very complex password. So you can click generate password here. I'm going to pause this video right now and create a random password and we'll copy it down here. So once you're done with that, you just click on the checkbox that says I have copied this into a safe place and I am ready to use the password and then it automatically enters it here. So as you can see, it is a very strong password and we click create user. The next step is step three is to add the user to the database. And to do that, all we have to do is click on all privileges and click next step. And that's it. So now what you need to do is hopefully you have saved the password to a very safe place. Usually what I do is I open up notepad and then I save it here. Now, in addition to that, I usually try to save this right here. So. If you're installing a web script, typically what it'll, it'll do is it'll ask you for your database name. And the database name is the full text between these quotation marks. So I'm going to copy that over here. So that's the database name. So I usually do db equals this and then the user equals this. And keep that in a safe place. So as you can see, that's how easy it is to create a MySQL database. Now what I want to do is click on return to MySQL databases. And if we scroll down, we can see that the database has been created. Now, if I go back to the outside here and I'm going to click on the logo and that just brings me back to the home page, I'm going to go back down and look for PHP MyAdmin. What this allows you to do is it allows you to take a peek at the database itself. Now I will warn you and I will say that do this very, very cautiously because any mess up, you could potentially mess up your whole site. But I wanted to show you this because sometimes if you have basic detective skills, you'll be able to kind of get an idea of what's going on inside the database. So if you click on PHP MyAdmin, it'll open up and it will allow us to edit specific databases. 
Now, obviously, you want to find the database that you just named. So in this case, it was the DB base. So it's this one right here. And we can click on here. So we can see that there are no tables found. And the reason why is it's an empty database, right? But let's say, for example, that we choose a different database that has data inside of it. So what I've done is I've gone into a WordPress site database in this case. I'm not going to show you the username and password and all that, but I want to show you some of the basics. So whenever you install a WordPress site, for example, it will have, you know, install plugins and all of that. And sometimes you'll see plugin database tables inside of here. So sometimes you can actually edit the data that is inside of these tables. But if you're just curious, just come in and take a look and see what happens and see inside of it. Now, obviously, I would be very, very careful if you are editing a site that you really care about. But by doing this and just looking at it, not really changing anything, this really gives you an idea of what is happening on the back end of your website. And the reason why I'm showing this to you is because... In the past, I used to do this, and whenever I came across an error or maybe there was something on the site that I couldn't change on the front end, sometimes I would go in the back end, like right here, let's say WP Comments, for example. You could see comments and all that here. So what I'm showing you this is the you can actually replace existing data with data that you want. And just coming through here and being able to see what's happening on the back end really allows you to see what is happening in your site. Now, this is very useful just in case you get locked out, especially if you get locked out of your website and you have to change your username and password, but it just won't let you in. So what you could easily do is you could come down here and go under WP users and then just change the password inside here. So that's why I'm showing you this is because there are potential opportunities in the future if something bad happens that you could potentially come in and get things fixed. But obviously, if you don't know what you're doing, then you will need to consult someone that does. But hopefully that gives you a better understanding on how MySQL databases work when you create them and then when they begin to populate. Everything happens right here. Hello and welcome to video number four. In this particular video, you're going to learn how to use AW Stats, which is built in to the cPanel, and how to apply it to your business. Essentially, knowing what goes on in your website is crucial. And we'll discuss about what the differences are between AW Stats and Google Analytics. Uh, Google Analytics typically gives you a more granular view of what's going on in your business. But that said, not everybody uses Google Analytics. Not everyone uses it at the right time. So the nice thing about cPanel is your AW stats is always running. And there are specific golden nuggets that it gives you that Google Analytics does not really give you. And we'll dive into that further. So in other words, not only will you be given an overview of AW stats, but You'll learn different features of AW Stats that if used correctly can actually go beyond and increase your website traffic and protect you as well. You'll also learn how people find you, what keywords they are using to type in search engines and how to use that to your advantage. And you'll also learn who is linking to you for good reasons or even bad reasons so that you can protect yourself. So we're going to take a little bit of out-of-box thinking here and show you some things that you may never have seen before. So to access AW Stats, all you need to do is go back to your main screen, as you can see here, and scroll down. And under Metrics, you'll see AW Stats. Now, I want to briefly talk about these other metrics. The visitors basically just tell you every single IP address 
and every single file that they are accessing. So if you want a granular view of what is happening detail-wise, what people are accessing, what IP addresses are accessing your site, you would go here. So that would be probably a little bit more overwhelming to the average Joe. Now, that's there, though, if you want to do that. And then, of course, bandwidth just tells you how much bandwidth or how many files in the metric of like megabytes or gigabytes your prospects and site visitors are actually using. So if you have a lot of videos, you have thousands of gigabytes of videos and there are hundreds of people visiting it per day, it gives you a better idea of how much your website is actually using. So in addition to that, you can click on AW Stats. Now I'm not going to show you, otherwise it'll show you my domain, but if you click on that, it'll give you the option to either choose the the regular yourdomain.com or the SSL version of yourdomain.com. So, and then of course you're going to see your monthly history over time, what is happening on your website, the days, the months, which months are potentially getting more traffic. So that's something that I would highly advise you to really start looking into. Like what days are your visitors reacting? Are there certain days that are better than others? because it's gonna be different for different websites. And knowing that information is actually gonna really help you increase your traffic and potentially increase your sales if you're running a business. We've got days of week, we've got hours, which is crucial. You might notice that you might be getting more people at a specific hour, specific time. And knowing this data is important because you can connect it to your email autoresponder system and email people at that specific hour. So really taking yourself out of the box and understanding what is happening here, how are people interacting with your website is crucial. And then we have locales, which is basically where people are coming from, the different countries, different locations, and all of that. We have different hosts, we have different authenticated users, and then what kind of robots are visiting your site? Is Google coming to your site and indexing your site? Is Yahoo, is other search engines doing that? And then the visits, duration, how long are people actually staying on your site? Are they staying a few seconds? If they are, that might not be a good sign. Maybe you can look at your content and see why. If they're staying a long, long time on specific pages, then why is that? Is it because their videos, are they intriguing? What is that? So use this data to your advantage. You can see file types. What kind of files are they accessing? Are they accessing regular pages? Are they downloading files? Are they downloading a lot of zip files or video files or, or whatever? And then different pages. What kind of pages are they accessing? What kind of operating systems are they using? What kind of browsers are they using? And you can also see where they're coming from. So you can see what search engines are sending traffic to you and who is linking to you. What, are, what files are they linking to? And this is a great way to figure out who is linking to you. Are they doing it for good reasons and they're maybe recommending you? Or are they linking to you and trying to hijack your files? And maybe they found like a loophole in your files and they're you know sharing it with everybody else illegally you can find that information and find what is happening within aw stats for that you can also see the search phrases like what kind of search phrases are people typing in to google to find you so this is really good to have so we got search key phrases which are phrases a bunch of keywords put together or we have keywords in the top 25 right here. And then of course you can see the different types of browsers people are using with different types of support. Now, whether that is useful for you, that might be, that might not be. But at the end of the day, what I found is from here up to here usually is very, very uh, good golden nuggets that you could potentially use in other areas of your business. So that's basically an overview of AW stats and why it is good for you. But at the same time, definitely install Google Analytics and look at both, compare both and see what is happening in your business.
and your website. 